And uh, I'm going to attack with my 2 1. And so I got to turn him sideways to represent. And, uh, but my, my, uh, my opponent has a 1 1 creature, and he's going to decide to block. Just let's imagine. Well, I'm going to do 2 damage to it with my attack. So he's going to die because his toughness is only 1. But on the flip side, he blocked, which means that that opponent creature is going to do 1 damage to my attacking Savannah Lion. And since his toughness was only one to begin with, he's going to die. So the, both creatures are going to take lethal damage in that example, and they're going to die. When a permanent is destroyed, which has happened lethal damage, it goes to your graveyard. So creatures go to the graveyard. Cards can also be discarded. This is also your discard pile. This is where things go to die once they're used or spent or totally, you know, destroyed. Uh, everything that goes into play will stay into play, except for sorcerers and instances. They're all permanents. So, I've finished my combat step, but I, I only interrupted my main phase. I'm still in my main phase. I'm going to go ahead and tap one white to generate one white mana, and I'm going to play another creature. It only costs one white, too. Imagine that. The Samaru Hound of Kanda. It's a legendary creature. That's a little bit different. What does legendary mean? Well, legendary means that it's... If you can only have one in play. It wouldn't be so legendary if it wasn't rare or anything, would it? It wouldn't be that legendary. It would be like common occurrence. So legendary basically means I only can have one of those in play at any one time. If there are ones in my graveyard and one's in play, it's okay. If one's on the battlefield and one's on in my hand, the battlefield being in play, that's fine. Uh, but I can only have one legendary Hound of Conda. Uh, in play at any one given time. Uh, it's got some text in the middle, and uh, I'm going to ignore it because it's italicized, which basically means that it's basically just flavor. It's just a story about the card. It makes the card more flavorful and interesting, just like the art. And uh, we have a... Uh, we see that it is a 2-2, so it's a little bit stronger than my last creature. It has the same attack, a 2, but it has a little bit more toughness, too. So it actually would have survived this last attack had the uh, had this creature been attacking. And you can see that it has a gold symbol in the middle. And that basically doesn't have any bearing. That basically means that it was a rare from the set of Kamigawa. But that doesn't, that's not going to affect gameplay. It's a... Uh, 2-2 two, two creature that costs 1. That's probably the real important thing that you need to remember. And also, I guess you would need to remember that you can only have one of these on the battlefield at any given time. You can have you can have them elsewhere in your hand, in your library, in your deck, uh, you know, in your graveyard, but only one on the battlefield. I have one on the battlefield right here. Okie dokie. So, he's summoning sick. He can't attack. He's, he's like the last guy a couple turns ago. He's still getting his bearings. And so, can I play anything else for the two untapped resources? I still have untapped resources that I could possibly tap into and use. And, um, well, I really want to play a spell for four next turn. I probably made a mistake on one of my cards. I think I might have should have cycled one of my cards. Discarded and drawed. It has a special ability. But we're going to go ahead and pass the turn. And we're going to go ahead and say my opponent plays another 1-1 one -one and another land during his turn and that's pretty much going to be his turn. He's passed it back to me. So, starting my fourth turn, you untap have no cards that say upkeep or require upkeep, so I basically ignore it. I draw my card for the turn. Yippee. I'm going to play my land, except for this time it's not basic. This is not a basic land.
This is a secluded step, and it has rules on it. It doesn't have just a symbol. It says that I could I can tap into it to add what might mana in my pool, but I can't do that right away because it comes into play. It comes into the battlefield tapped, already tapped. I can't use it my very first turn. I could pay a white rather than play it play it down onto the onto the battlefield or put it into play. I could discard it from my hand and draw a card if I were to pay one. So as you see the parentheses, the parentheses sort of kind of remind you what cycling one is. Cycling basically means that I could discard it from my hand and draw a card if I were to pay one. White. But I'm gonna go ahead and play it because when it comes to my next turn when it comes to my next turn, I'm going to want four of these resources because I have several cards on my hand that actually do cost four. And um, so we'll have to wait till that untaps next turn. I don't have anything in my hand that only costs three. And I played my one that costs one, but he's no longer summoning six. So I'm going to go ahead and decide I'm going to attack. And so I, I'm going to show that he's going to attack. And my opponent had the one had the one one that died and he played another one one. And we're going to imagine that he didn't block and so he takes an additional two. So he took two a couple turns ago, took two now. He's down from he's down from 20 to 16. All right. And since there's nothing else I could do with only three mana that is untapped, I'm going to go ahead and pass my turn to my imaginary opponent. And we're going to go ahead and say that he plays a spell and he destroys this creature. It says destroy target creature. We're going to imagine that he plays that card and he destroys this guy. Well, that's what he did with his turn. And since I have no creature like that he's gonna attack me I can't block I have no creatures to block I have nothing protecting me really my land can't protect me only my creatures could possibly could possibly block so he's gonna attack me with a 1-1 one, one. I'm gonna take one I am now at 19 life but after that he's gonna be done and I get to start my turn so I'm gonna untap I am gonna upkeep no cards. Draw. Alright. Here we go. All of the things that I've spent cost one white. We want to get out of that. That's not a very good example. I'm going to tap one green and three planes to play another creature. So I tapped one green and three of something else, three planes. Now the important thing is that I've fulfilled the one green requirement and that I have actually paid three of anything else. It could be colorless, it doesn't have to be white. It doesn't. It could be red, it could be blue, it could be black. Um, this creature costs four total, one green and three of something else. And his name is Order of the Sacred Bell. He's a creature, he's a human monk. Um, he's from Kamigawa set, just like that hound was, but again, that symbol is only there to denote the set, and it actually has no bearance on gameplay. Also no bearance on gameplay is a tilealized text that, uh, just as flavor, it tells you the story a little bit of, a uh, little snippet, little quote maybe from the world that you're playing in. But this is the biggest creature I've played to date. The more costly the spell, typically, the bigger bigger effect you get, like the better better creature. Uh, he costs four, and his attack is four, and his defense is three. So he can attack for four or do four damage, and he can block for three damage or uh, possibly take up to three, three damage, and he'd die. But he could take up to two damage and not die. It's uh, if it's if three damage or greater was done to him, he'd die. 
But otherwise, he'd, he'd live if only one damage was dealt to him, if only two damage was dealt to him. So he comes into play. He comes onto the battlefield. 